This morning, <clears throat> we're going to talk about getting the maximum data, the, or the, I'm sorry, the last data value in a table, or the last row of data in a table. And this is kind of based on, this video is based, because it's a quick video, but it's based on a, a job interview I had where uh, one of the interview interviewers asked, well, how do you get the last row of data in the table? And so I started immediately problem solving it, and the person just looked at me like, you just, you just do a count star. And uh, that's actually how to get the last row number in a table. But if you want to get the last row of data, in other words, you want to get all the data, the, that final row of data in a table, that account star is not going to give you the final row. And so it was one of those funny things. Uh, some of my colleagues and I were talking yesterday about some of our funny interviews that where uh, a person misunderstood the question and it was like, wait a minute, that's not how you, um, uh, that's not how you get that answer. <clears throat> and so... Uh, there are a lot of questions that you'll get asked over the years and it's just some of them are kind of funny because you're like what oh you meant this and we all have different ways of saying the same thing but that's what we mean so for instance if i wanted to get the the, the final row of the, the final row number <clears throat> in a table one of the ways i could do that is just do a count star so in the tesla uh, table here that i have tesla historical data as you can see the last row number of data or the last row number i should say is 598 Okay, but if I want to get the the total data in that row, I want to get all of that row's data, the final row, um, that doesn't give me the answer. And that's what I thought you, uh, the interviewer, I should say, the interviewer was asking. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to actually get the last row of data instead of just getting the, um, the last row number. So we're going to build the common table expression like we do a lot here. I'm going to call it this kind of randomly and I'm going to select star from that table and the next thing I'm going to do is which I've done in several videos so by now you can start to see all the uses of row number and row number requires an over by in term minimum wise it requires an over and then an order by clause now <clears throat> I happen to know this table has an ID field called, let me verify this is correct, yeah, uh, Tesla ID. So the way that I organize my stock tables is the stock symbol um, gets attached to an ID and that becomes a column like that. <clears throat> so as you can see, now notice the order by clause here. So when we do the row number over, we're going to order by, we're doing it by ID. So um, the the minimum ID, which is 200, gets the minimum ID here, which is 1. Uh, the minimum 200, I'm sorry, Tesla ID 200 gets the minimum ID. This this ID field right here is derived from row number over order by Tesla ID. If I ordered it by date, it would do from min to max on date, or from min to max on price, or min to max on 200 a day, simple moving average. <clears throat> okay, so um, right off the bat, there's our... Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, this should be as ID. Let me see if that'll, what message. I guess one. Okay. okay, so that is our common table expression there that we've built in that selecting star. And notice that if we scroll down, there's our final row of data, right? which is 598, I'm sorry, our final row number, um, 598, see even I get confused. So we want to get these data right here. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the Tesla ID, we're looking for the date, we're looking for the price, and we're looking for the 200 day simple moving average. That's what we want, but we want it where the ID, the row number, is the, the final row number. So, um, since we have the common table expression here, as you can see above, we have a field called ID, right? Now, there are actually several ways to solve this problem, but I'll just discuss this one because this one's really quick and pretty simple. So, we can say where the ID equals, now we don't know that it's 598, technically, if we were going to do this on some table that we had never seen. So, we could say where the ID equals maximum ID, I'm sorry, so where it equals select maximum ID, and then we could do from getting the max. 
So what we've done is we've actually referred back to our common table in our subquery here. And you can see that our final row of data, so this table hasn't been updated since uh, August, <clears throat> but our final that's our final row of data here. So um, if you get asked in a, a job interview ever that, you know, how do you get the final row of data? Do, do uh, trust me on this one, ask them really quickly, do you mean the final row number or the final row of data? But if they're looking for the final row of data, this is one of the ways that you can get that, the actual row of data, that last row. Um, if they're looking for the row number, again, it's just select count star is, is probably the most effective method I can think of. Um, I guess you could select the maximum. I guess if you had an ID field ranging from one to the final row, you could do the maximum ID, but that's not always convenient. So, but anyway, this right here is, is the answer to that question that I, that I thought it was, even though it was another question. So it's one of those uh, funny things that, uh, that just happens from time to time where there's a slight misunderstanding. But either way, you have both solutions. If someone asks you, how do you get the final row number, you just it's count star. And then if someone asks you for the final row of data, this is one of the ways in which you can get that.